sometimes you just make a mistake. And I'm not going to necessarily own that this is a mistake, but I will say I had no intention of buying him. Well, if you got a dollar, won't just lousy down. Know that I got rhythm that could suit your budget found. Hi, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, well, Trusty Huckster Mercantile is a vintage reseller, primarily with a presence on Etsy, a tiny little bit of a presence on eBay, and at least for another week or so, a presence at a brick and mortar location in North Aurora, Illinois. Uh, but I'm moving out at the end of the month, so don't really worry about that. And I also sell uh, vintage on live sales on YouTube on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern here on this channel. So this video is showcasing uh, some items that I picked up at a recent visit to a uh, somewhat local Goodwill. Uh, it's uh, Admittedly, it's about an hour away, but it happens to be very uh, close to uh, one of my favorite auction houses uh, that I pick up a lot of items at. And uh, so I made a stop at the Goodwill and was pretty successful. And I wanted to showcase uh, some of these items. Uh, they will be a variety of uh, locations, available at a variety of locations. They may end up on Etsy. I don't think any of these will end up on eBay, but a very good uh, proportion of them will end up in my live sales. So if you are not familiar with the uh, current trend of uh, live sales on YouTube, uh, first thing to know is they are not all auctions. Uh, the way I do my live sales, I do them as uh, simply a fixed price. So it's always a good price, a great product, and it's just first person to claim it uh, wins that item or claims that item. So there's no, I just, I just sell it at a fair price. Uh, so you can join me on Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. on YouTube. I uh, hope you can join us. And even if you don't want to buy anything, you can still hang out with the Huckster Hecklers uh, in the chat. Uh, there's always a live chat that goes along with the sale, and you might have some fun. And uh, who knows? Maybe you will end up buying something. So a few of the items that I picked up were picked up with the intention or knowledge that, you know what, these are just small items that it's one of those cases, I hate to use the term not worth my while, but there are going to be some items that it just isn't worth the time and the effort that it goes into photographing for eBay or for Etsy to do the listings, to do the tags. Uh, Etsy is my primary platform, so they have a slightly different way of listing. And if it's only going to sell for five bucks, it's just really not worth it to put onto that platform because then they take all their fees and it's just, it's literally just not worth the hassle. Um, so those are the types of items that I will end up listing in a live sale. And one of the first ones is something like this. It is just a little restaurant wear dish. Um, restaurant wear does do fairly well on live sales. Uh, there are a couple people that are pretty well known for it. Barb from Winking Owl Antiques. Uh, she does another live sale on Friday nights along with Jeffrey at Real Nifty Vintage. So pretty much every night of the week you can find live sales. If you're not familiar with them, you can get familiar very quickly. Uh, but she does a lot of restaurant wear. And I've tried to sell it. Sometimes it does well. I personally like Lambert and Scamel. Seems to do the most, uh, the best for me and I like the history of it. This ends up being a more of a simple piece, but with what I liked about it was its design because not everyone collects restaurant wear or they don't care about restaurant wear. This just ends up being a little simple heavy china dish with a really pretty and a fairly simple red and uh, white design. So this is one of these cases that, you know, you put a little red votive candle in here. I'm missing it by a couple of months. It would have been perfect, or a couple of weeks, really. It would have been perfect for Valentine's Day for like a nice little vignette. But just something very simple like this, it probably originally was intended for condiment sauce, something, it's just a little shallow bowl. Uh, but if you don't want to use it in your kitchen, uh, it's just a very clean red and white design. Uh, that I think can pretty much go into a lot of decor, but there's just not a lot of value to this. So selling it by itself, I'm not gonna put it onto Etsy. It's a perfect low dollar item for my live sales because some people are just, they're there to have fun. And so if you sell something like this for four or five bucks, you know, it makes somebody happy. Uh, they can go home with a really nice looking piece and uh, you, know, you move on with the rest of your life. Other small items I'll pick up, uh, sometimes they end up being more seasonal. Uh, a lot of places, again, this is all from a Goodwill uh, run. So a lot of times you tend to get seasonal items after the season because somebody has you know, cleaned house after they decorated and they're donating a bunch of their things because maybe they're moving next year or whatever. Uh, this was actually a, um, a rare occasion where I was finding items early, uh, not super early, but you know, so I've got this little Irish linen uh, handkerchief upside down. 
a little Irish linen, a little, uh, what are those called? Um, shillelaghs, I think. Um, you know, with a little clover on it. It's just a little Irish. Uh, it is cotton. I was about to say Irish linen, but in this case, evidently it's cotton, but it's just a little embroidered handkerchief still and it's a little in its original box. So you got a little bit of age to it. So you got kind of a neat little vintage uh, little handkerchief, perfect for St. Patrick's Day, you know, that you could leave in the box because it's got the green or, you know, maybe you press it and it lies flat underneath a vignette or in a, you know, basket of some sort. Uh, just something a little bit different than, you know, some of the maybe the more common um, St. Patrick's Day decor. And this, you know, whether this actually falls under a St. Patrick's Day is a question, but this is uh, made in Ireland. You know, they are lace. And if you're new to my channel, you'll catch on very early. You will find a lot of coasters in the Huckster world. And these are Irish linen embroidered um, well, they're basically embroidered uh, coasters. Now, I don't know how functional they are. You know, basically they're barely stitched together and there are holes in them. Um, but they are coasters nonetheless. And it's just a little set of four. Uh, it said Made in the Republic of Ireland, Shannon Embroidery, Milltown, Mal, Milltown, Malbay, County Clare, Ireland. Shannon Embroidery, members of Beresfold Group. Doesn't look like there's a date on this. But, you know, just based on the style of the box, it's got the, you know, the clear plastic covering to it. I would say this is probably like an 80s or 90s. There is no uh, barcode on it, so it could be older, but it could just not have a barcode. Um, so, you know, it's, again, this was something I could inexpensively pick up. These are not going to be exceptionally valuable or bring a huge price point. So something small like this, again, it's great for a live sale. So that's where these will end up, uh, whether it's this week's live sale, next week's live sale. Sometimes I just stockpile items. But because I do feel that there is going to be some attraction to doing these for St. Patrick's Day, since they are Irish, I'll probably sell these sooner rather than later. Uh, just so if somebody wants to use them for St. Patrick's Day decor, they'll have a couple weeks in to be able to get them. So some of the seasons that are coming up that I ended up shopping for a little bit farther away and that's Easter. So this is a case where depending on if you're new to my channel I've only been doing vintage resale for about a year and a half. Uh, so it's, um, yeah about a year and a half. I started in October of 2019. So if you take uh, kind of do the math uh, that was less than six months pretty much before the the current situation everything started shutting down. I've never really sourced for Easter because last year that wasn't really something I was doing uh, prior to Easter. So I really am doing it for the first time, kind of figuring out that, you know, at this Goodwill at least, what type of seasonal material is available. And for whatever reason, there was a lot of Easter. Now, I don't know if that was unique to this location or if that's something that's fairly common, um, but whatever the case, I was able to go through quite a bit of legitimate vintage. There's definitely some repro stuff out there and a new thing Goodwill starting to play around with like carrying new stuff but you know there was definitely some vintage things and one of the things that I picked up which uh, you know thought fit the Easter bill uh, were these little uh, red red wick red you know, well they're they're just little ceramic creamers that have the like the red stitching design on the transferware I want to say that's red wick reddick no red wing no I don't remember. You know what I'm talking about. Red stitching on white white ground. Um, so, you know, they did even like the little stitch work across the top. So I, there was the bunny. There was a chicken. You know, you got Easter eggs. So you got something pop out of them. So you got the Easter chicken. You've got the pig, which, you know, unless you're eating an Easter ham, I'm not exactly sure where a uh, little piggy went to market fits into this. But whatever. You got the little pig. And then I'm going to go with, I'm going to say duck, maybe a goose. Now I'm going to say that's a duck. So you got the duck and the little, the little ducklings. So you've got all four of these have a very similar style and doing a little bit of digging. Google lens is your friend. I uh, was able to find that these are being credited to Andrea by Sadek, Sadek, Sadiq. I'm not exactly sure how to say that. Uh, but that is a name that I'm familiar with. I've carried a lot of their porcelain pieces. But admittedly, this appears to be a little bit later because it's the Andrea by Sadek made in the Philippines. Now, in the big scheme of production 
calendar and map history. I think Philippines are pretty late in the role. So these may not even technically qualify as vintage. You know, maybe they're only 10 years old. I have no idea. But I thought they were super cute. I got a really good price on them. And this again, um, I don't think, I think I'm going to probably sell these individually. Maybe what I'll do on my live sale is do them like choice you know, five bucks and, you know, take your pick of which one you want. Because you add them all together, it ends up being kind of expensive. And what are you going to do with four? You know, if you, yeah, you could use them, you know, for your milk and cereal in the morning or whatever. But I think these are going to be designed for vignettes. And, you know, some people might want more than one, but I like, you know, more people to get into the game. So maybe I'll sell them separately, five bucks a piece, something like that. Again, an inexpensive enough item that I just really wouldn't want to put this onto Etsy because it's just, it'll get lost in the mass of, you know, material that's available, um, you know, but it is cute and I think it will be popular and i uh, probably offer it in one of my upcoming live sales. Around Christmas time, I did a tour of the location that I currently have a brick and mortar uh, in uh, North Aurora, and I did a tour of the store. And one of the things that I found was this artwork that was, it, er, it turned out it was a mass produced piece. Uh, it was signed by Lionel Barrymore, and it was a gold metallic, kind of like a gold leaf, you know, scene. And it was just, but it was all gold and it was all very shiny. And I was having a very difficult time trying to catch the, catch it in the camera because the lights were bouncing all over the place. So when I saw this, and you see light bouncing all over the place, I wanted to pick it up just because it was, again, an inexpensive grab. It's not the same. You know, it doesn't have the, uh, it doesn't have the, it's not a Lionel Barrymore piece. Um, it's just got, I sit like a little winter, snow scene but there's a lot more color to it i mean literally if you didn't see it literally the the barrymore one there was no color it was literally all gold so this one has a lot more you know variety in it but it's, it's that same it's that same vintage look and it happens to still be in its mat just not in a frame which usually works against it but because this is a standard 11 by 14 frame it, you know, you can get any modern frame would be able to hold this. And without the frame, it'll be significantly cheaper to ship. Uh, so again, this is something that maybe could go on Etsy. You know, I think it could be popular there. But Etsy works all off of keywords, all off of, you know, just basically search engine optimization for people to find things. There's no label for this. There's no artist signature. There's no information on the back. There's nothing to really get the keywords to grab onto this. And really, who's going to be searching for metallic winter scene? You know, it's, it's a very distinct look. And it's also, for things like this, it's all about the photography in Etsy. And again, this is going to be really tough to take a good photograph because the minute you tilt it, you basically get almost an entirely different picture. Like the image looks very different. It's not holographic or anything. It's just because of the shine. So this will also, you know... I. I guess I probably knew a lot of these were going to go in the live sale, but this will probably also end up being a live sale because it's not going to be particularly valuable. I mean, I'm going to sell this for under 10 bucks, um, but it's just, it'll be more likely to sell and I can kind of showcase, you know, what the different images are. And it's just, it is, it's a really nice, it's not a Christmas scene. It's just a winter scene. Um, so it has a little bit more versatility um, and just, I think would look great as a backdrop to a couple, you know, to a lot of traditional decor. So this is one of the items that probably will end up going on to Etsy, primarily because I've sold one on there before. Uh, what this is, is it is marked Teleflora on the bottom. Uh, it's, got, it's got a little molded, um, see if you can see it there, you can kind of see, you may not be able to read it, but you can kind of see there's a mark right there that says Teleflora. Uh, and it's a, a little like candy box, it's got a lid to it, still taped on with these little frosted swans. And I have sold this before, so I knew what this was when I saw it. This is from the Gloria Vanderbilt uh, collection from like the 80s, I think it was. Um, so it was sold by Stella Flora, must have had somehow held the lid on, you know, with a flower bouquet. Luckily the lid survives, because uh, they're not, they're worth nothing if you don't have the lid really. Uh, but as a, you know, traditional piece, it's just clear glass, which not everyone wants clear glass, but people love swans. Uh, people still know the Gloria Vanderbilt name. Uh, it's just a simple dish. Again, it's not going to sell for a lot of money, but it's got enough keyword combinations to it that it will probably list well on Etsy. 
and I'll get a little bit more for it on Etsy. They sell for around 20 bucks, or at least that's what I sold the last one for. I'll have to do a little bit more digging to see you know, if they've gone up or down. Uh, but it was one of those cases that when I saw it, it, I knew it was a low enough price that even if the prices had gone down a little, I'll still be able to recoup my money. If it, they went down too far, well, then it'll go on the live sale because you know if it's a, a low low price point item, it'll do better on the live sale. And that's, uh, I'll, I'll figure out where this ends up. There'll be one of the two. So this is a piece that without exception, I had entirely anticipated this was gonna be in the live sale. I didn't even research it. It's, it's an image of a koala bear on both the front and the back. It's got a really pretty green background. It's in absolutely perfect condition. It is from Maxwell Williams Designer Homewares, designed in Australia. Uh, admittedly, the price tag was covering part of this, so I didn't even know all of this information at the time. Um, but I, you know, I, I think I could see the Maxwell and Williams part, which was not a name that meant anything. But to me, this is an absolutely adorable mug. It's a, it's kind of like a, I wouldn't even say it's stylized. It's just, it's just kind of a unique, you know, artistic impression of a koala. It's great that it's on both the front and the back. Uh, I like the fact that the handle is a different color than the body. I mean, there's just some really cool design things about this. Uh, so I was going to pick it up regardless. Then I realized it was designed in Australia. It was designed by Pete Cromer, uh, porcelain dishwasher and oven, oven and microwave safe. Uh, when I started to do it, when I did research these, I just, you know, just, I usually do that to check. I didn't do it till I got home. I realized that this actually is not a very common piece. Uh, this style is done in a lot of other pieces and they always sell it for really good money. Uh, so this could end up going on to Etsy. I haven't decided yet. It's like kind of on the cusp. Koala will always do really well on Etsy because it's a great and a very popular keyword search term. Uh, so anyone who likes koala, they're not going to search for necessarily the name of this mug. You know, sometimes they might if they saw it someplace else and they want one or they broke one and they want to get a replacement. You know, that happens. But for the most part, uh, particularly on Etsy, you're again, you're working off of search engines. So if somebody's going to be looking at, you know, gifts for koala bear lovers or they love koala bears, they're just going to type in koala and see what happens. You know, this would be something they would grab and they may not necessarily know the name, but as they start looking around, this is a very distinctive look. And uh, again, I think it'll sell for decent money. Not sure it's going to be enough to justify an Etsy. I still have quite a bit of things I need to list there. So he may still end up in a live sale or he may go on Etsy, you know, but uh, just like everything else, if you're seeing anything you like, catch me before I list it and you can have it. You know, I, I'm not proud. Um... So, you know, that's why sometimes we do all these resellers, we do these videos, because if you want to grab something, saves us a lot of time trying to list it if you just say, hey, send it to me, and I can do that. Sometimes you just make a mistake. And I'm not going to necessarily own that this is a mistake, but I will say I had no intention of buying him. <laughs> At some point, I had him in my hand, and he ended up in my cart. And as it was being pulled and put onto the, the counter, I was too embarrassed to say, oh, I don't want that. So I ended up just buying it. So, I mean, it, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a very, um, you know, I would say 80s period specific uh, little cross stitch done in a embroidery hoop. I mean, but this is why I say it's 80s, because technically that is not an embroidery hoop. Uh, you know, embroidery hoops like that would not be like this dark wood. It would not be curved. Um, but it's designed like a hoop because you can see the inner piece to it. Uh, it was pressed together um, somehow. Yeah, like an embroidery hoop would be tightened. This one's not even tightened. It's literally just like friction shoved in there. And then they trimmed it out. It's definitely a homemade piece carrying all kinds of stitches. You know, that's just something a professional stitcher would not do. Uh, and then, you know, very roughly cut. It's like I said, it's it's cute but it, I had no intention of buying it and I just literally must have been distracted and put it in my cart along with something else. So he'll be going into the live sale because, you know, five bucks, maybe. Um, I, I think he's worth five bucks. You know, it's just it's just not something I think people will be tripping over themselves to get. Um, it's cute. It's a built-in wall hanger. It's got the, little, got the little hook, you know, on it so you can hang it. Um, but, you know, we sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes we need to pay attention. This is uh, my mistake of the day.
There are cases when you buy with your heart instead of your head, uh, which is not always the brightest thing to do. Um, but there are certain things that in this household we tend to gravitate toward that not everyone will. Uh, my daughter, uh, the Huckster Helper, is a German and history double major uh, graduating this year, so we tend to gravitate toward things German. Uh, my orientation on that is moved to Austrian. I love all things Austria. Austrian Vienna is by far my favorite place, and I've traveled to 35 different countries, so I do have some variety to pick from. Uh, Vienna is by far my favorite, but I am a Russian minor. Um, can't really speak it anymore. Sometimes can still read the alphabet, maybe if I you know, try really hard. Um, but there are just some things about the aesthetics that uh, attract my attention, and this is something that I wanted to bring to the bring to the table. Admittedly, there's times where I can't tell if this is Russian Orthodox or Greek Orthodox. Orthodox. I don't tend to get too hung up in it. Um, you know, to me, it has the look of an icon. You know, that would be Russian, but I wouldn't be surprised if this turned out to be a uh, a Greek Orthodox piece. It's simply a wooden egg, which has a very dark uh, stain to it. But you can, if you look really closely, you can see there's some of the wood graining is still in there. So you can see the way it was done and the way it was turned. And then the gold Madonna and child painted onto the front. Easter is coming. Um, you know, even the Orthodox Easter, you know, is at a different time. It's just a very attractive piece. I don't tend to have religion iconography all that often, um, but this one just really did kind of speak to me. I did really like it. I don't know enough, again, about the production of it that most likely this will just end up in a live sale because I don't know the right search terms to get this to be picked up in Etsy. Uh, and I didn't pay that much for it, so I can sell it for an inexpensive price. I just think it's really pretty that depending on how you decorate for Easter, this might fit in a much more traditional living environment as opposed to some of the cutesy kid-centric uh, Easter decorations that are really popular. Nothing wrong with those, but sometimes those don't don't look great on a Biedermeyer you know, buffet. Uh, this would. So, you know, this is just one of those pieces. I was able to pick it up inexpensively enough. It'll go in the live sale, you know, I don't know, probably like eight bucks um, because I just think it's really attractively and, uh, and very well done. And I think does make a very good addition for Easter, you know, for someone who's looking for a slightly different way to a different way to decorate. I did a video maybe a week or two ago, and I think it was another uh, Goodwill um, hall and ended up inadvertently having some conversation within it talking about whether people do research uh, while they're in Goodwill and or related to whether you own up to the idea if you're a reseller if you let people know that you're a reseller. I am of the of the of the mind why should I hide it particularly in a Goodwill it's not like they're going to change the prices on me. Um, so I do tend to do a lot of research uh, when I'm uh, in a Goodwill. Uh, these, this was a piece that I chose did not, I found I did not need to do any research on for a couple of reasons. One, it's a beautifully designed mug. Um, if you're new to my channel, uh, once a year, I've now done it two years, so I'll do doing it again this November. I do a fundraiser for the Just One More Dachshund Rescue Organization, J-O-M-D-R dot org. Uh, and last year we raised thirty five hundred dollars for the for the rescue uh, in November, uh, basically doing a live sale of items that were donated specifically for the fundraiser. And as part of it, I always donate some of my own pieces. So when I get dog related items throughout the year at a really good price, I'll just hold on to them and then offer them during the uh, JOMDR fundraiser. So this was definitely going to come home with me because even though it's not a doxy, we definitely do a lot of dog related items. You know, dog lovers support dog lovers. And some people do like, I'll have to do a little bit of research because I don't know what that is. Maybe a spaniel. I couldn't read the print that's on the bottom. I don't know if that's a signature or if that says what it is, but it's got the little stubby tail. I don't know if that's a Brittany Spaniel. I'm not sure. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of digging on that. But it's this great, you know, really nice sized uh, tankard. And like, so I would, I would have bought it almost entirely because of that. So I'm pretty much going to bring it home. Then I flipped it over and flipped it over again and discovered it was Francoma. So it was immediately coming home with me because it was a very good price for a Francoma mug. And then about two seconds after picking that one up, I found its mate. 
So I actually found a pair of Francoma uh, dog mugs. Like I said, I'm still not sure what the dog is. Spaniel of some sort. So this is definitely a case. I will not list these on Etsy. I'll put these into a box. If anyone were to buy them in advance, I would save the money and I would just give it to the rescue early. Um, because these are just something that I'm really excited because I was able to pick these up so inexpensively. I want to donate them to the fundraiser so that any money that these would make, and I think they'll bring a decent amount of money, any money that gets made off of these would get donated to the charity. So two pieces of Francoma in absolutely perfect condition. Uh, I don't necessarily know with that stamp, uh, with that uh, color gray, I don't necessarily think they're the oldest models, but I don't think it really matters. People know Francoma. It's a very well-known name, and for either a presentational piece or a functional drinking item, um, I don't think these can be topped, so I was really excited to pick these up. So the Francoma was pretty much a slam dunk and did not need to do any research, knew that those were going into my cart almost instantaneously. Sometimes, though, I do need to do some research. Now, this there was, again, the conversation that took place after my last video. You know, some people comment, it's like, oh, well, I just, you know, I trust my gut. I know what, if it's good. I, I can tell when something's good. I'll just pick it up. I can trust my gut, and I'm you know, very proud of myself when I can pick something up and when I do the research. Like, okay, you know, I'm, my, I'm honing my eye. I'm getting a little bit better. Uh, I definitely will still pick up things that when I flip them over, they say Hobby Lobby or something like that. You know, it's, Avon is very common because for as much of a bad rap Avon gets, they made some really nice looking pieces. And so I find Avon quite a bit and always feel that, uh, you know, it's very well made. This was a piece that I picked up and instantaneously wanted it, but I wanted to know what it was. There was no label on the bottom. There's no markings or anything on the bottom. It's, uh, it is glazed. There is a design on both the front. You kind of see the dual um, bull design on the front, as well as a very simple image on the back. Um, they basically look like caved paintings, cave dwelling paintings, you know, even to the point that it's got kind of that texture as if you were painting it on the rock. Uh, and it is just very like done with like charcoal from the fire. You know, it's a very primitive, you know, definitely indigenous people design. I can't find this. Google lens failed me. Uh, key term, keys, keyword searches failed me. Um, this is a very specific style of cave painting that was um, something in France. Lestau, Le Le Ca I can't remember now. Um, you know, some of the earliest cave paintings. Obviously, this is trying to replicate that. I feel this is a high-end piece. Uh, it's just got a really nice weight to it. It's got a gorgeous shape to it. I mean, for as a, for as a picture, I just feel that this just is a beautiful... A silhouette for a, for a piece. Uh, this to me is something that should go on Etsy. Again, I'd like to know a little bit more about it because I feel not too many people are typing in cave paintings or a caveman that's looking for f de decorative porcelain like this. So this is probably part of a series or a, definitely a glaze finish from a specific producer of this uh, pottery. Or, uh, yeah, it's pottery, not porcelain. Um, I'd love to be able to identify it. So if anybody's got any suggestions, I am absolutely open to them because in absolutely perfect condition, I did, you know, for goodwill, I did pay up for this a little bit, um, but I felt it was entirely worth it. It uh, doesn't mean it won't go on a live sale. If I can't find enough keywords that will make it work on Etsy, it would go on a live sale, but it's still going to be a high-end piece even for my live sales. Most of the time, my live sale will average around 10 bucks is kind of like my sweet spot. I'll have things down to like four and five and maybe up to 15 to 20. This might start going over that a little bit. I would say I feel like this is a 35 to $45 piece, uh, depending on if I can find anything that says otherwise. Um, but that's why I was willing to pay up for it because I think that's what it's worth. So sometimes doing the searching is definitely something I'll do, but sometimes you still strike out. So it's a case where, you know, I did the research, but didn't really find anything else, but I still got it because just like the comments that came through last week, the end of the day, sometimes you do just have to feel, you know, you got to, you got to use your gut. And, you know, because I do this on the side, 
part of my gut feeling is also, is it worth me doing for the fun of it? You know, I can find car parts and I can find toilet replacement parts that probably could make me more money than something like this. I do not want to photograph the, a piece of my toilet. I, that's just not something I'm into doing. Nothing wrong with people that do do that. And luckily, because this is a side gig, I do get to pick and choose what I carry. This is the stuff I like to carry. So, you know, it's again, maybe it's not a hundred dollar piece. Maybe it is only a $50 piece, but it's still something that I think is fun. Uh, it's unique. And I just, I can't wait to see this end up in another good home. Uh, that's what it's all about. So that's why I picked it up. So hope you enjoyed a little bit of the haul. Uh, this is again a stop at a Goodwill in. This was actually I don't know if I mentioned it. This was Ottawa, Illinois. Um, I see no reason to hide, you know, where I go. If you happen to be local, hey, knock knock yourself out and go to Ottawa. Um, there's a couple of great places to source there, and the Ottawa Goodwill is one of the better ones that I uh, have found items at. All of these came from there. Uh, again, range of items. They're not all going to be super valuable. I'm not planning my retirement off of this one haul, but there's a lot of fun stuff in here, a lot of cool things that I think will be fun to sell at a, at a live sale that people will be interested in, some cool pieces to photograph that I think will go well onto Etsy, and, you know, it gives me a little bit of variety, and variety is the spice of life. So I hope you enjoyed that variety, and hope you enjoyed the video. If you've joined this far, you've seen this far, and you're still not a subscriber, I really would appreciate you subscribing, uh, maybe clicking on the notifications so you know when I'm doing videos in the future. Uh, definitely give it a thumbs up. Uh, believe it or not, that does make a difference. Uh, people are directed toward this video uh, by people that YouTube recognizes uh, videos that are being uh, interacted with. So people that are viewing them, commenting, liking them, whatever you end up doing, it all helps the cause and uh, helps my channel grow. So I appreciate your time, appreciate you putting your trust in Trusty Huckster, and hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. Well, show me a sign if you're wishing me to stay. Otherwise, I say goodbye and finish out the day. And that sunrise in the morning and you got nothing to say. Oh, that's when I'll be headed on my way.